Hello students, and welcome to this lesson on Triangle Congruence Theorems. Our objective today is that we will identify Triangle Congruence Theorems using journal notes and practice problems. So first off, let's talk about how to prove congruence, and here we have a special theorem that will state something extremely obvious. And that statement is that if all parts of two triangles are congruent, then the triangles themselves will be congruent. So let's talk about the different parts, right? So we have sides, right? So we can talk about sides being congruent. We can talk about angles being congruent. And then if we're talking about a right triangle, we can talk about the hypotenuse being congruent and the leg being congruent. So these are going to be the major objects that we're looking at when we're looking for congruence. So we're just going to run through all of our theorems. And you guys saw these the other day when you did your exploration activity. So our first congruence theorem is going to be the side angle side theorem, or SAS. And what that says is that two pairs of congruent sides and the included angle between the sides will cause congruence. So what does that mean? So we have two pairs of congruent sides. So we were talking about this side and this side. And then we've also got this side and this side. And then when we say the included angle, that means the angle in between those two sides. So if you're traveling between the sides, right? So if you're traveling around like so, then the included angle is going to be the angle that falls in between the two sides. So then this is going to be our side angle side theorem. So we go from a side to an angle to a side. All right, our next theorem is going to be the side 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 theorem or triple S. And what that will tell us is that if you have three pairs of congruent sides, then they will be congruent. And we also saw this. So you have one pair, two pairs, three pairs. And so no matter what the diagram looks like, if you see this type of marking, right, where you have these three congruent sides, then you are going to have uh, congruent triangles. So if you have your points labeled, then you would have these three statements, and that guarantees the congruence. All right, our next one is going to be the angle side angle. So if we have our two triangles again. Angle side angle just says two pairs of congruent angles in the included side, or the side that is between the two angles. So if we have our first angle here, which will be congruent to this angle here. Now look, I'm being tricky to you today, right? Orientation. Uh, is really all that matters. So, if I have this angle being congruent to this angle, then the included side would be here. So those two triangles will be congruent. The only difference is the orientation, right? I could move one of these around and spin it around and they would still be congruent. So that's a key thing here, is that we've got our angle, our side, and our angle, and then we've got our angle, our side and our angle here, right? And so we have our congruency statement still. It'll still hold here. It's just our orientation has changed a little bit. All right, and finally, we have angle, angle, side. So the angle, angle, side theorem is two pairs of congruent angles and the side not between them. So in this case, we would have congruent angles here, congruent angles here, and then we would include one of the sides that is not between the two angles. So I could choose this side, and that would qualify for this theorem. So you see we have an angle, an angle, and a side. We have an angle, an angle, and a side, or our AAS theorem. All right, so the next one is going to be hypotenuse leg. This one is special because uh, we're talking about specifically right triangles. So this is only for right triangles. All right, so here we have our right angle, and then you have this side is congruent, and this side is congruent. Therefore, those will be congruent. So this only works, guys, for right triangles. Remember that hypotenuse leg. And the thing is, is that this length here is the hypotenuse. And a hypotenuse is going to be the longest segment 
of a right triangle. And then the legs are just the other two measures. All right, some other things to remember here is that if you have a figure and you have this shared side, right? If I were to break this down into two triangles, right? You have one triangle that was the upper triangle and one triangle that was the lower triangle. What we're saying is that this segment here, this shared segment, occurs in both triangles. It occurs here and it occurs here. Therefore, it is congruent to itself. So that causes a congruency statement right there. Um, so this is called side overlap. And then the other thing, guys, and you already know this, is if I have a diagram here, like so, and I'm wondering, oh man, I wonder if this angle is going to be congruent to this angle. The answer to that question is yes, because this is a property that you already know. This is called vertical angles. So this is just a reminder, right? This is a new context to see this, but this is something that you guys already know. And then now let's look at some non-examples of theorems. So things which might look like they could give you congruency, but will not. So one of them is going to be the angle, angle, angle theorem. So that would be angle, angle, angle. And this does not guarantee congruency. Just like you guys saw in your experiment, it was very possible to have a very different AAA um, triangles. So these will not guarantee congruence. You have to have at least one side included. Uh, and then the other one which is not congruent is the side-side angle. So be really careful with these, right? It's very easy to say, oh man, I see these congruent parts, so they must be congruent. But you have to have one of our five theorems that we talked about, right? SAS, triple S, ASA, AAS, or hypotenuse leg. So these non-examples will not work. All right, so we're going to go into the practice portion now. All right, so we start with this diagram, right? And I want to show that these two triangles are going to be congruent. So we have to see how that would work. Uh, so it looks like so far we have that AE is congruent to ED. And we also have that BE is congruent to EC. So we have a side we have a side, and then over here we have, or rather, let's color code this this way. So we have a side and a side, and then we have a side and a side. So we need a theorem that uses at least two sides, right? So we've knocked out ASA, we've knocked out AAS, so we either have to do triple S or we need to do SAS, right? Um, so let's look at our diagram. It doesn't tell us anything more about AB and CD, so I can't use those. So I can't use the side. So I'm looking for an angle, and specifically I'm looking for, um, probably I'm looking for side, angle, side. So I'm going to focus on this angle here. And I want to see if there's any way for this angle to be congruent to this angle. Well, yes, it can, because we know that those are vertical angles. So then, by vertical angles... So by vertical angles, then, I can say that angle BEA is congruent to CED, and therefore the triangle BEA is congruent to triangle 
C E D by the theorem S A S. And this little symbol here, right here, that just means therefore. All right, let's move on to the next one. So this next one is a little bit easier because you don't have to deduce anything. We can just list our parts that are congruent, right? So I know that angle B is congruent to angle T. I know that angle R is congruent to angle C. And then I know that TS is congruent to AB, or rather BA. And so if I label these, I know that this is angle, angle, and I'm going to color code again. So angle, and then over here is an angle, and then right here, these two angles are together. And then it looks like our output will be, we have to have at least two angles in our theorem, right? So that's either going to be ASA or AAS. And it looks like we go from an angle to an angle to a side, right? So we can say angle to an angle to a side. So this is going to be, therefore, by AAS. We can say that, and let's be precise, triangle TRB, sorry, TRS, is congruent to... And then we can say, we have to start from the same place. So we start from B, and then we move to R, which means we're going to move to... So we're going to move from B to A to C. All right, so that's the end of our notes for today. Your reflection is that you're going to define the hypotenuse, right? And then you're also going to define a leg in terms of a triangle. So remember, leg in terms of a triangle, what are the legs? So what are legs of a triangle? And you can do this by either writing a sentence or drawing it and labeling a picture. So if you have any questions, let me know. Have a wonderful day, and goodbye.